Scarlet Blaze. The Triumph of Valor. To rescue Count Burglies, Edelgard seizes the Great Bridge of Murden, forcing Count Gloucester's surrender. With no time to lose, she then presses on, unbowed. But Claude is not one to be caught off guard. He rallies every resource at his disposal, determined to tighten the noose around Burglies' forces and prevent any rescue. So we've lost Gloucester. Unavoidable, perhaps, but it still stings all the same. Fortunately, I haven't been sitting on my hands this whole time. If we smash the Imperial reinforcements and stop them from breaking the siege, Count Burglies will have no choice but to give up. We're going to face that challenge, and we're going to face it with the Alliance's latest and greatest, which is why I've asked all of you here. Did you really just say latest and greatest with a straight face? Oh, he said it all right. And while I can't swear we'll have that, we do at least have numbers on our side. Yep! More than half of the old Golden Deer House is here! Some of us may not be quite as great as you say, but... Well, you know best. I'm grateful to each of you for answering the call. It's more than I can say for some of our classmates. Yeah. Ignatz and Lawrence both sided with the enemy. No. About that. It pains me to say this, but how Cerdelia has made its allegiance to the Empire clear. It was against my parents' protests that I came here in the first place. If this battle doesn't unfold the way you're hoping, I may be forced to leave as quickly as I arrive. That's okay, Lysithia. You're not the only one who's here with strings attached. Yes. My adoptive father has also insisted I return home at once, should the tides turn against us. Sounds about right. Three cheers for that good old Alliance Solidarity. I'll fight with you to the end, Claude! Uh, unless it puts Maya in danger. Then I'm out. Look, what matters is that you're all here, and that we settle this war with the next battle. Also, for full disclosure, I may have sort of brought along some extra professional muscle. Come on in. It's good to meet you. I'm the acting captain of Gerald's Mercenaries. Our guest here is fresh off another battle with the Empire on Kingdom soil. From what I gather, remaining in the kingdom was no longer an option. And that's when our paths crossed here in Alliance territory. Oh, hello! I know reliable when I see it, and you are definitely that. I'll do whatever you ask as long as I'm getting paid. So long as we're allied, I won't fail you. All right, let's begin our council. As you've no doubt heard from our scouts, the path from here to Deirdre will be fraught with difficulties. The Alliance has constructed fortalices and palisades, and laid other traps to slow our progress. In addition, they are plotting ambushes at key positions along the way. Needless to say, we will not be able to avail ourselves of the direct route. But if we try to dance around all their traps, we'll never make it in time. Yes, but this is Count Burglies we're talking about. He could probably stretch his soldiers a few extra days through sheer force of will. I would normally write off such an idea as lunacy. But sadly, it will likely come to that. We have made attempts to smuggle provisions to Count Burglies through holes in the enemy lines. But this has met with little success. They must be so hungry! I know just how that feels. The struggle to get food when all you want to do is hide under your covers. 
Hello, old friend. I mean, no offense, but if time is truly so short, why do we waste it dithering in council? We should embark on our rescue mission straight away. What are we waiting for? We're their only hope. I agree. Less talking, more saving. Calm down, all of you. Such rash action is exactly what Claude is counting on. So we must take the safe route, but do so as quickly as possible. A best of both worlds situation, I suppose. Understood. Good. With that decided, let's move on and discuss our preferred formation. This is true. Let's see. I suppose. Supplies are the lifeblood of any army. Everything has its use. I carry a little of everything here. Got an eye for quality, friend. Hope to see you again soon. In that case, you should just keep picking commoners like me for all the important jobs. Strength in numbers, right? The more of us there are, the less anyone will be able to complain. Hmm. I believe your point to be a sound one. But putting it into action will only heighten our chance of failure. Try as you may to troll a river for jewels. You will most often find yourself hauling up mere pebbles instead. I get what you mean, I think. Accidentally picking the wrong person could really hurt the Emperor's reputation. And provide the perfect opening for nobles who want nothing more than for commoners to be kept in their place. An utter disgrace. Here we stand amidst the flames of war, yet some on our side only seek to drag their compatriots down. There is no rot, as fetid as that which plagues our foul aristocracy. It would not surprise me if they breathed noxious fumes. I mean, it's not like they're literally poisonous. 
Are you so sure? Spend an hour in the same room with some of them, and see if you don't feel the life being choked out of you. At any rate, it seems you must be the one to plow forward, for the time being. Uh, come again? You are a mercenary, Captain, no? Surely there are worthy candidates for promotion among your subordinates. The situation would be far less volatile if any potential appointees came with your direct endorsement. Oh, good. No pressure at all. And if the person I pick doesn't work out? Assuming they are not totally indefensible, we would do our utmost to shield them from criticism. Though I suppose if worst came to worst, we would be forced to sever ties with them. And you. I can respect that. Protecting the Emperor is priority number one. Indeed. It is the first and only priority. Do note, though. You needn't force yourself to pick someone, if you fear the consequences. Uh, right. Got it. I guess in the meantime, I'll let you know if I think of anyone who might be able to handle the job. Oh, and let's keep the whole severing ties thing to the real worst case scenario, okay? You might look the calm and logical type, but I know your emotions could get the better of you sometimes. <sighs> Keener insight than I expected. Perhaps you truly are the right person for this task. <laughs> Quite the eye you have on you. Uh, thanks? My vision's not too bad, I guess. Now, if you could only pair it with some intellect, we would have a true wonder on our hands. Time to work you into shape. Can't wait to see how you do. To make we all must do our fair share. Hunger is the true enemy. The flavor's not really there. Might want to try something different next time. Hey, my favorite! You sure know how to brighten a guy's day. Wait, for me? Great. I love this stuff. Come back whenever you're hungry. Hunger is the true enemy.
solid. Oh, thanks. Did you know this was one of my favorites? Ah, a high-quality meal suitable for my refined palate. I am most grateful. Come back whenever you're hungry. Care to make yourself useful? Counting on you both. I will see it done speedily. Oh yeah, we've got this! We all must do our fair share. Care to make yourself useful? Counting on you both. I hope to prove at least as useful to you as a pile of discarded rubbish. You have not to worry about with me on the job. We all must do our fair share. Concentrate our efforts on rousing conversation. Afterwards, I say we reward ourselves with a gripping training session and crown the evening with a meal well deserving of our ravenous appetites. Huh. Is something amiss? I don't know. It feels like you might be leaning a little too hard on the whole giving your all thing. You didn't used to be like this. I know you want to do your best, but it's starting to feel like I can't even relax when I'm with you. <sighs> Perhaps you are right. I have been feeling rather restless lately. I suppose seeing my father locked away in that dungeon made me feel the need to... accomplish something. At times like these, devoting myself fully to what few things I can do is all that keeps me going. Otherwise, I would simply succumb to the reality of how powerless I truly am. The pressure is... immense. Now that you mention it, I think I finally know what was feeling off about you. It's that pressure, forcing you to keep your guard up. Like, you're constantly braced for the worst. Take your breaks, for example. It never looks like you're doing anything even resembling relaxing. I wouldn't worry about your father, though. I know you'll find the right solution. I appreciate your counsel. I feel as though I have gained some valuable new insight into myself. After all, one can hardly notice the changes they undergo as they happen. It seems partnering with you is the right decision. Your advocacy for maximal effort continues to be an inspiration. Oh, I wasn't really trying to give you advice or anything, and that's definitely not what I'm advocating for. But if what I said helped, then I'm glad I could be there for you. I just hope you can start cutting yourself a little slack. Your future's bright, Ferdinand. A veritable wellspring of advice, as always. I am deeply obliged. As long as you're feeling better. I mean, war councils are grim already, but they'd be practically unbearable with you sulking around the place. And really, it was nothing. 
Just here to help. Nothing? <laughs> if ever there is a time to give it one's all, it is when expressing gratitude. It seems you could learn something from me as well. And just you watch. I swear on the Iron Name, I will surpass my father in the most stunning fashion. He's never gonna learn, is he? I'm grateful. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Hello. I appreciate... As a matter of fact... I'll take... You. Very nice. <laughs> I love it. I am on it. Exactly what I hope. Very nice. Well, how'd it go? Any results a good result. Listen, truth be told. Let's see. <sighs> No. Truth be told. Ah, it's you. How's it going? Any developments to report? You mean with my power? Not really, no. Hmm. Perhaps using it regularly won't be enough to provoke growth. Good to know. <sighs> hey, I thought you said you weren't interested. I mean, how many times are you gonna come ask me if anything's changed before you're happy? Weren't you the one so keen on piquing my interest? I only wanted to check how that was going. If you don't think it's possible, just tell me and I'll stop asking. Okay, yeah, it's definitely not happening. What? But this was all your idea. How cruel of you to stoke my excitement only to back out at the first sign of adversity. Come on, just keep trying a little longer. How about this? Describe the circumstances in which you first awaken to your power. Maybe we can reproduce the situation and see if lightning doesn't strike twice. Well, I was staring death in the face when it happened. I'd been beaten so badly I could barely stand. But I kept telling myself I wasn't ready to die yet. Then, out of nowhere, it just... 
came to me. Hmm. I suppose we shouldn't try to recreate those conditions. Nobody wants a dead officer on their hands. Let's consider some other potentially relevant factors. Who was your opponent? Where did the struggle take place? What time of day was it? Do you think your emotions played any part in it? I was fighting the Ashen Demon, of all people. I hope we get the chance to cross swords again someday. As for the when and where, we were in a forest, at night, and pretty sure it was a full moon, too. That leaves my emotional state. But I don't know how I could replicate the intense emotions of being at the brink of death like that. I see, I see. That context would prove quite tricky to simulate. And if your power functions similar to a crest, revealing itself even when you don't intend it... That leaves only one option. Observing you on the battlefield at all times. Ugh, this is turning out to be more work than I signed up for. Weren't you telling me not to give up just a second ago? If I can do it, then so can you. Hmm, I'm not so sure. Bernadetta, what's wrong? Is there a rat in the base? Wait, a rat? Nobody told me about a rat! Oh no, oh no, oh no! It's gonna nibble on all my snacks! Hey, calm down. I didn't mean a real rat. I, I was talking about an enemy spy or something. Anyway, it's something kind of like that, but different and still really, really bad. Kind of like a spy, but different? <sighs> Slow down and tell me what you saw. Well, you see, there was this lady in the camp earlier who didn't look scary at all and even seemed kind of nice. and fear of strangers got you down, huh? Let's see if I have something that can help. Thanks. Hmm. I think I've got just the herb. It's gonna put you out a good few gold coins, but this baby will do wonders for relieving stress. And then... Ah, I've got something a little more, shall we say, tasteful. Real under-the-table kind of stuff. It's a pot that makes people like you. 
I would probably recommend against it. But the thing's on sale if you really want it. Uh, you okay there? I just remembered something. Oh, how could you forget, Bernie? There are lots of scary people out there who pretend to look nice just so they can prey on you. And you must be one of them! Well, that was weird. I'm not that scary, am I? And that's how it all happened. I would have been dragged off and murdered if it wasn't for you. But wasn't that just Anna? She's here all the time selling her wares. I mean, not all of it's the most reputable stuff, but I don't think she's trying to cheat anyone. And she's definitely not a murderer. This is all my fault. I should go apologize to her later. Huh? She's not evil? <laughs> not that I know of. I I'm also pretty sure it's not the first time you've met her. I don't know. I'm bad with faces. You're pretty judgmental, you know that? Huh? What do we do? What do we do? How about this? There's this merc I've got in my crew. A real terrifying looking hunk of muscle. Sweetest little teddy bear on the inside, though. If anyone's gonna help you overcome this, it's him. Okay, I accept this challenge. You've got this, Bernie. carry a little of everything here you've got an eye for quality 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 friend 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 hope to see you again soon me I actually found myself at a nobles tea party not too long ago oh you must be talking about Ferdy right he does love his tea uh, no it happened while I was doing some work as a bodyguard the nobles who threw the party even gave me a cup of tea to show their appreciation I didn't really know what to make of it though hard to say if it was even good or bad understandable Settings like that tend to choke the flavor out of any food or drink you happen to come across, among other things. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm built for all that fancy stuff. Hey, remember when I asked you to sing for me? You belted out a verse from one of your operas? It kind of reminded me of that tea. It's like, I just don't have the background for that sort of stuff. If you don't grow up in it, you're not gonna get it. Everyone has a right to those things, though. Taking in a tragic opera, letting an elegant meal dance across your taste buds. Nobody should be excluded from those pleasures just because they were born a commoner. I'm not so sure that's how it works, though. 
Take my time back as a mercenary. I would have gladly eaten a half-cooked rat if it meant I was getting food in my belly. It's only since I joined up with this army that my palate's become a little more discerning. But what I'm saying is, if you never have the chance to eat good food, then you'll never know what good food is supposed to taste like. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing, but... In that case... Uh, Dorothea? Oh, sorry. I got a bit caught up in my thoughts there. But I think it might be just as you say. Will you indulge me for a moment? Sure. What's on your mind? When I first started singing, I did it for me. Only me. But it wasn't long until Manuela discovered my gift. So, I joined the opera company. It felt... incredible. I wanted the whole world to hear my singing. But once I became a songstress, I started attracting more and more attention from the nobles. Before I knew it, I wasn't singing for myself anymore. I was singing for them. Now you can't even appreciate my songs if you weren't born with a silver spoon in your mouth. That might be true, but like I said, that isn't necessarily a bad thing. So many people would kill to be able to do what you can do. So, don't belittle yourself like that. Your singing is incredible, Dorothea. I appreciate that. <laughs> I really do. But... I still can't help but wonder... Excuse me, may I ask for your ear? Sure thing, what's on your mind? I have the desire to be learning more about mercenaries. It is a subject of much fascination to me. Uh, sure, I guess. But I think you've heard most of the exciting bits by now. Nonsense. Each word you speak is full of excitement. Please give me more illumination. For example, are you receiving payment for your work here? Sure. Me and Edelgard have a contract. Lucrative one, too, as these things go. Guess the boss thinks pretty highly of me. You said money was of importance for people who sell their swords. But what if an enemy offered a bigger payment? Would you be taking it? to get a true merc to switch sides. Still, if an enemy can outbid your current employer, it means they've got a good shot at winning. And nobody who enjoys breathing wants to wind up on the losing side. So in Fodlin, one must try to be allies with the side that has more richness? 
See, that's the thing. Trust is its own currency, too. I mean, let's say someone shows up with a pile of gold and asks you to switch sides. Tempting, right? But you gotta be careful. You could take them up on their offer, only to learn that the money was just bait, and the guy actually wants you dead. And to make things worse, the honest employer you just stabbed in the back now knows you're as reliable as a three-legged horse. Point is, integrity means more to a mercenary than money. Probably should have led with that, actually. I have understanding. Trust is of importance to everyone. But that has even more truth for a seller of swords. You got it. Oh, and trust me. Folks who hire for the best jobs make sure to know everything about you before extending the offer. But there's a flip side to that coin. If you're the type of employer who likes to leave mercs in the lurch, you better believe that word will get around. Hard enough to stay alive without that nonsense. That is a thing we all share in common. We wish to keep breathing, as you said. And what if I was offering a job? We are on the same side. Would that be betrayal? Bridget is a land of richness. We can offer much in exchange for the selling of your sword. It sounds tempting, but... Eh, I can't. I've got to see my current contract through first. Also, didn't we just get done discussing how terrible it is to abandon a job before it's done? <laughs> I knew you would be declining. You are the model of a mercenary. Please? to work you into shape.
guess I'll have to learn something new. This is... This... Training can be the... Can't wait to see how you do. Training can be the difference between victory and defeat. We must work together and improve. to see how you do. Uh, I was wondering who it was. What fortuitous timing. Did you need me for something? Nothing in particular. I was simply thinking of having a little chat with you. Please, do relax. But I already am relaxed. I've heard your background is quite the mystery, and what's more, that you possess some sort of unknown power. It's certainly a bold decision for Her Majesty to put someone like that in charge of frontline forces. I don't know if there's anything bold about it. Oh? It seems you do not understand your unique position, then. Typically, wars among regions are fought between nobles and the knights in their servitude. But you are no knight. Merely a mercenary who commands soldiers in fealty to nobody at all. Maybe so, but all my orders come straight from the Emperor herself. What's the problem? There is no problem, per se. You excel at what you do and fight with true valor. However, protecting one's people during wartime has always been the nobility's responsibility and theirs alone. Some nobles may feel insulted that they have to rely on a simple mercenary of unknown origin. Seriously? But nobles are usually the ones hiring mercenaries in the first place. On the other hand, it is true that Her Majesty has actively appointed commanders of common birth of late. This strategy has proven effective in shoring up our ever-dwindling resources. And, of course, the nobles have no choice but to obey Her Majesty. Which means there should be no particular reason for anyone to resent you. Didn't you just say they might feel insulted? If nobody's getting all hot under the armor about it, then there's no problem, right? That said, this does not change the fact that a noble's obligation is to protect the common folk. Though your exact origins remain unclear, you undoubtedly fall into the commoner category as it stands. Therefore, you are entitled to all the protection a noble is compelled to provide. Simply say the word if you ever require my assistance. Of 
course, Lawrence. You'll be the first person I go to. Capable guy like you has plenty of sway with the other nobles, after all. You know, at first I thought you were just coming to complain, but you were actually trying to be nice. Me? Nice? To you? <laughs> oh my, you are funny. Allow me to explain. I am the heir to House Gloucester, a noble among nobles. My offer of aid was not an act of kindness. It was a means to inform you of your place in this society. You would do well to remember the order of things here in Fodlan. So, you just came to tell me how I'm disrupting the order? You are complaining. Most certainly not! Do you really think me that small-minded? I've acknowledged your skills, and all I ask in return is that you act according to your station. Understand? Not really, no. I mean, we're at war, and you're seriously telling me I need to worry about how nobles and commoners are supposed to act? In any case, my job as a mercenary is to fight. Simple as that. You're wasting your time if you're gonna get all bent out of shape about me. I am not getting. Mm -hmm. oh, never mind. We shall continue this at a later date. Training can be the difference between victory and defeat. No matter. See how you do. Days like today when there's hardly anyone around. Hello, Bernadetta. Do you have a minute? Ah, what? I wasn't doing anything, I swear. I'll take that as a yes. Listen, there's a small matter that needs a bit of handling, so I'm gathering up anyone who's available. Which, as of right now, is just the three of us. Okay, well... I'm not much good at dealing with things, and certainly not with, you know, matters. Knock it off. You can more than hold your own in a fight, and you know it. I mean, sure, we'll be fighting bandits in a cave, but how hard can it be? Oh, see? I should definitely sit this one out. Isn't there someone else you can ask? This is my day off! It's Bernie Day! Actually, nearly everyone else is off seeing to one task or another at the moment. Oh, I guess that's why it's so nice and quiet around here today. Enough! If we don't make haste, the enemy will realize we are coming and flee their location. That's Duke Gert, the Minister of Foreign Affairs. I assume this is your first time meeting. This may very well be, 
I have quite often worked alongside your mother. Really? I guess I should be thanking you for keeping her safe then. Ah, not so. In fact, it is very much I who am indebted to her and her considerable talents. All right, I think that's enough introductions for now. We need to get this show on the road, remember? Quite right. Bernadetta, let me get you up to speed. Two years ago, I was attempting to recover the lost fetters of Dromi. But a suspicious personage, seemingly having learned of my efforts, managed to infiltrate my inner circle. They were likely working for Lord Arundel. In a related note, someone attached themselves to my father, Baron Ox, during the time I went missing. My investigation into that person led me to Duke Garrett's inner circle. Point being, these suspicious actors all appear to lead back to a single group. And those are the cave people? Indeed. After many fruitless attempts, we finally managed to track them down. We must strike before they have a chance to relocate. And Edelgard and Hubert and the rest of them really aren't around? It's just... me? Looks like Bernie Day will have to wait. Hey, you're not the only one who wants a day off. But come on, we're all helping out. Let's go. And remember, time is of the essence. We will strike a mighty blow against any who would threaten our empire and her majesty. And as I fear I'm not much of a fighter, I will be depending greatly on you all. Good luck. Is this truly the place? Because it looks for a world like a hideout of common brigands. I think that's the idea. So first, we'll need to eliminate the bandits outside. It's Bernie's time to shine! Sure hope this... I will gladly handle this.
for lost relics. Ah, you hadn't heard. I do so under direct orders from Her Majesty. We needed the bargaining chip to buy the Archbishop when we negotiated the reformation of the Southern Church. Take a breather. Here it comes! You're done! Here. Go! Now! Not a problem. Some time. Doing well, thank you. He's slowly becoming more accustomed to his standing as Baron, despite never wanting it in the first place. Not a problem. I've got it. Fighting's all I do these days. Good. We can enter their base now. Into the caves, everyone.
I will gladly handle this. Let's march. Not a problem. Move out. <laughs> Under attack? How did they find us? Sounds like you're onto us. We had best get ready for a tough fight. My turn. handle this. We're done!
will gladly handle this. Not a problem. I'm here to help. I will gladly handle this. What? This. I will gladly handle this. Or and a strong will. She's nothing at all like what I'd heard. Yeah. success, I suppose. He is certainly proving to be a troublesome foe. I will have to inform Her Majesty. We should all feel good about getting through that last battle with our heads still on our shoulders. Thanks mostly to the two of you. Yes, you set my mind at ease regarding our future prospects. And I've come out of it with a fine story for Lady Varley. 
Oh, um, you did? Yes. She's been quite worried about you. Now I can tell her you're getting along wonderfully. Um, thank you? And with that, I must take my leave. Of all the Imperial nobles I've met, that guy seems like one of the most decent and normal. The kind of man you can trust. Yes, what you see is what you get with the good Duke. He's a truly honest soul. He tries to keep himself safe and sound, of course, but that's no different than any other noble. He also seemed pretty worried about Bernadetta. So hey, are these caves great or what? All that cold, crisp air just settles right in here. It would be a great place to curl up and hide. I have no idea what you're talking about. Come on, you know, the mountain air, the clean type, it all settles down in the caves. I like that. Hey, whatever you say. Such caves are often layers for monsters as well. Oh, and bandits, obviously. When it comes to curling up, I think this would be more dangerous than cozy. Yeah, that's actually a good point. It might be too dangerous to hang out here all alone. Plus, if heavy rains have been eroding the bedrock, a bad enough storm could collapse the entire system. All that to say, I think you're safer staying in a room with four man-made walls. Fine! I won't hide in caves anymore! Are you happy? Anymore? But you're always just locked up in your room. I'm not! We see each other all the time! Let a locked up person do that? Huh? Uh, we really don't see each other much. When was the last time before today? Oh, don't tease me! Sorry. That came out wrong. Apology accepted. But you better watch it. Well, I think we're done here. Let's head back. <laughs>